Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. Hello, welcome to Illinois Stories. I'm Mark McDonald, just north of Jacksonville at the Tom Have Cow Calf Operation. Uh, this is a crucial time of the year for a calving operation because um, in the case of the Tom Have farm here, or Tom Have farm here, they like to time the birth of their, their calves at this time of year, and then I think again in the fall, we're gonna learn more about the, how the timing is crucial, but this worked out very well for them this year. They had their calves in January, and now as you can see, they're still very, very, very small. They call them babies, and the babies are with their mothers now. And John, Tom, Have, this farm has been in your family for a long time. Correct. Um, what are you, the fourth generation? I would be the fourth generation. You're the fourth, and yes. your son and daughter-in-law work it with you. Yes. Okay, and they have children. And they have children. So they may be a sixth. Maybe yeah. a sixth maybe on the way. Maybe a sixth generation. Exactly. I mentioned the timing is crucial. Now we stand here. It's mid-February, and it's cold. Mm -hmm. But this works for you, doesn't it? Yeah. Actually, we don't mind the cold. The cold keeps things frozen hard, and it gets you away from the mud. And uh, actually, when we uh, dealing with mud and rain with calves is worse than, than the cold. Because once, once they're born and the mothers get them cleaned off, big hair, you know, good hairy calves, yeah. well, they're, they're, they're good to go. Yeah, they're, I mean, they're made for the weather, huh? They're, yeah. They're, and yeah. we're looking at a little one here now. Is, is that that's mother? Is that her yep, mother? Yep, that's her mother. Uh, that one was born, what's today? Monday, a week ago, Wednesday. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's, it's about six, seven days old. Uh, that's her first baby. Really? And, her uh, first? Her first, yeah. How does she seem to be taken to motherhood? Is she? Well, <laughs> they, they do it naturally. We, we try to uh, pick the genetics and the type of cattle that do it on their own. You, sometimes you have to assist them, and that, assist them, and that's why we have mm -hmm. to have a facility like this. Yeah. Now, how many babies do you have this time of year? Uh, the, this facility right here, we've got about 20 young ones so far. In the next, uh, oh, 45 days, They'll end up being between 80 and 100 right here, and that'll that'll be the majority of our spring herd at this facility. Now, they we manage another facility north of here that uh, will have about that many or more. Mm -hmm. So uh, probably by the end of the spring, uh, we'll have calved close to 160 mm -hmm. to 180. Looks like we're getting some company here. Now this is one of the moms, I guess. Yep. Huh? Does she have a young one this go around? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. It's, it's in the barn behind her there. Mm -hmm. she, that's probably who she's talking to. But yeah. uh, uh, we, li we like to leave them close to the facility for at least three or four weeks until we know the babies and the moms are going to be okay. And then they get turned out into yeah. different pastures. Now, and they'll come in at night. Most of them will come inside? Uh, when it, that really cold weather will bring, we would have brought most of the young ones in. Mm -hmm. But like weather like last night, no. They're, uh, now, we try to have little huts these little barns that are out in these paddocks. Yeah, yeah. Mostly only the calves can go in them. And so we have gates across the front so the, the cows can get in behind them to get a break from the wind, but the babies mm -hmm. get to go in to, so they have a dry place yeah, to so lay. So keep them out of the, they keep them out of the wind and you want them to be dry. Dry, It's, yep. it's wet that they get in trouble. Yep, huh? what's, okay. the, what's the problem? I mean, they, they're made to handle the cold. It's just getting wet. Because so. these, two, these two young ones over here, they kind of learn to take care of each other pretty quick, don't they? <laughs> yep. They, in fact, the instinct is coming on them already, isn't it? Yep, they're, uh, <laughs> those, those are probably about a month old. We started calving right right around Christmas time and then calved most of January. Yeah. Uh -huh. so. Now, do you ever run into a, a situation where mom doesn't take care of calf? Yeah, um, they'll uh, occasionally young ones uh, will not take a liking to it on the first day or two, but usually 99% of the time she'll take the calf. Mm -hmm. uh, the only problem we usually have is if you, sometimes you have a set of twins, she'll take one and not the other one. Mm -hmm. uh, or We've got an orphan calf that we're treating later on here in the barn that... Uh, it's not that one there, is it? Uh, no. It's another one in there, but uh, she lost her mother at birth. Her mother prolapsed in giving birth and the vet couldn't save her. So actually that mother right there, the 71, is helping nurse her. She, she's letting two calves nurse off of yeah. her, but we have to supplement it a little yeah. bit and we got to give it some other antibiotics and yeah. stuff to help it along. Oh, but, okay. Uh, 
Well, maybe you'll let us see that process too. Yep. Where you're actually feeding and, yep. and, and treating treating the animal. animal. Yep. Um, so, so you've got uh, if I if about twenty babies here now. Yes. Okay, and, and then you do this twice a year. So you do that. You'll have another twenty. What born in, in the summertime? Well, no. In the next thirty or forty days, we'll have another sixty or seventy born here. We're we're still in ah. the process of it. Okay. Uh, the, and we bring we'll bring more females in we, that we have at other pastures. Mm -hmm. And they they wait in the pen out here to the north until they're ready to have calves, and then they move into this facility. And then as they calve, they get turned into yeah. here. Once the calves are old enough, then we haul them out, and then we bring the next group in. And you just kind of keep oh, I see. Okay. keep using it that way. Mm -hmm. uh, but with the with the automatic water, the waters that you see there, they're uh, they've got electricity in them, heaters in them, so you don't have to worry about water freezing. Uh, you do have to put out hay about every day, and that's uh, so we're getting ready to put yeah. some out. And uh, that's been kind of tough too with the mud and the and the snow. Yeah. And it's yeah. this winter has lasted about yeah. six months for yeah, us. Yeah, but this is why you like it frozen because you don't have that much trouble getting around. Huh? Yes. Okay, yep. and you grow the hay yourself too. That helps too, doesn't it? Yep. My son has a hay business, and of course we do our own, and then he does a lot for mm -hmm. hire. But uh, yeah, they'll will bail thousands of bales a year mm -hmm. to try to take care of them uh, and then we wrap them the the white row sitting over there that's a big plastic wrap that goes around the bales sure enough and uh, so it keeps them dry keeps them mm -hmm. fresh uh, so when you take it out of that wrap it looks as good as the day you put it in there there's no spoilage in there so we're utilizing uh, that technology yeah. to help with uh, keeping the hay good good quality hay so Part of the story too is this barn that's right behind us. Yes, sir. This barn was. <laughs> this is as old as the farm, isn't it? <laughs> we, we we don't know exactly how old it is. There there is a there is an etching on a board in there that says 1880. We don't know if that's when it was built or that's when. Well, but the family purchased the property in 1916, and uh, my father knows obviously more of the history yeah. than I do. But it's it's been a mainstay uh, for you know a hundred and some odd years, and it's. Uh, it's still working good yeah. for us. So. Well, let's go inside, and I think we're going to talk to your dad about this yep. about this barn anyway, right? So yep. let's go on inside. There you go, Wayne. Your whole life was spent in and around this barn, wasn't it? Yes, it was. And your grandpa did your grandpa didn't build it, but he bought it in 1916, and you were just a little kid. Yeah. Was well, it? I was born in '40. Oh, okay. Well, of course you weren't here in 1916, yeah. right? But but you remember as a little bitty kid knocking around this barn all the time. Oh yeah, yeah. And Quinn and Charlie were the last two workhorses they had. And they were a gift from my mother's parents when they got married in 36. Uh -huh. And we've got a picture somewhere of them sitting on a wagon of ear corn. <laughs> with Queen and Charlie hooked up to Well, you know, people don't don't realize that workhorses did all the work on a farm up until tractors were invented, oh, yeah. and that would have been your your grandpa would have needed horse, horses, right? Oh yeah, yeah. And there was two horse stalls here. And mm -hmm. see that divide there? Yeah. I've got the divide down in my shed where I relocated it. Mm -hmm. And there was two horse stalls here. Mm -hmm. And this barn may, may have been built as late as, as long ago as 1888. You know, I think there's a date in the loft on that south wall, mm -hmm. but I didn't get up there. Yeah. Look. But you, as a kid, you, you worked in here all the time. In fact, yeah. you used to have to scoop oats, didn't you? Yeah. And my sister and I would bring our wagon down and they had a hammer mill over in the crib, yeah. and they ground bean meal and corn and put it in that second bin and oats in the first bin. And we'd have to bring our wagon down here and haul oats up to the chickens. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, did they kept chickens in here too? Uh, Cows, they, horses, and chickens? <laughs> no, the chickens were in the chicken house. Up okay, all right. Where his okay. house is. Okay. That's where you had to haul the feed to. Huh? Yeah. Okay, all right. And th there was also feed stored up here, wasn't there? Above in the, in the loft. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. And there's, of course, were those steps there then? Is that how you got up there? Or were, did you just scramble up some other way? No. There was permanent steps here. 
Uh -huh. And there was a screen wire cover so the hens wouldn't get up there and lay eggs. <laughs> well, that's smart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and there's always baby kittens up there. Baby kittens, of course. Yeah. And did you have did you have cows too, when you were a kid? Milk cows. Milk cows. Okay, not not beef cattle like this. No. Okay. And they would feed beef. He dad would buy some calves. Mm -hmm. And he'd feed them out out here, and we'd get two bucks of ear corn, and break them over the side of the bunk. And when you scooped, when you scooped oats, you had to climb. You had to climb up there, and there's a chute. Yeah. Right here. Was that your? Was that were you? What you were aiming for? Mm-hmm. And we scooped oats. We back a wagon in there and scoop oats in that van up there. Mm-hmm. Grandpa always said if you didn't have a bucket or a shovel in your hand, you weren't doing anything. <laughs> Grandpa was pretty smart, wasn't yeah. he? Yeah. <laughs> well, we did everything with a bucket and shovel. Mm -hmm. Sure. <laughs> Still do, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> Somewhat. <laughs> Thanks, Wayne. But it's a lot <laughs> simpler now. Yeah. Well. <laughs> you want to dump it in the bucket? Good job. Oh, good girl. You've been <laughs> on the farm a while, I can tell, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Lauren, <laughs> you're a partner in this cow calf operation, right? Yeah. You and your husband, Austin. Uh -huh. um, odd, oftentimes, I think, the, you know, mothers don't always take care of the calves or they don't have enough milk or something happens right. to mom. So you end up having to do the, the motherly duties, right? Yep. Okay. Um, does it happen very often? Oh, not very often. One or two a year, you think? Mm hmm. Yep. And then it's. Uh, like what you have to do is just get them to this to the point to they're weaned and then and then they're okay dude they can eat on their own solid right. food and everything actually right? they can we start out with some starter here with them if they're having to be bottle fed it just kind of gives them a little bit more and gets them going yeah and the starter is a solid food that we just saw your daughter dump dump into there yep that's okay. gracie's job that's gracie's job okay gracie's pretty good at it yes gracie likes to do the now, Feet dumping in the hay. Why don't you show us what you need to do with this little right. fella here? All right, so this we do this about one to two times a day, depending on if another mom takes them or not. Uh -huh. um, and for this one, it needs a little bit more get up, so we do some electrolytes in the morning and it's milk, and then at night it's just okay. solid so milk. So this replacer. is not just milk, this is also has some chemicals added to it. Right, it's half um, electrolytes. Mm -hmm. And how old is this calf? This one's three weeks old. Uh huh. And will be weaned when? About six months old. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So you really have to do this for a long time. Okay, six <laughs> yeah. months. But but solid but, food and and milk. Right. right. Okay. So as mm -hmm. they get older, they won't have to have as much of the milk. Mm -hmm. But also as they get used to it, they'll even come up here to the gate and stick their face through there. And that's when Gracie likes to hold the bottle. <laughs> And Gracie, you you can do that, huh? You're big enough to hold that bottle. It doesn't scare you, huh? No. Nope. Yeah. Oh no, it doesn't scare. <laughs> doesn't me. scare. Yeah. How many of these are 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 you having to bottle feed? Right now, just this one. Just this one. Mm -hmm. So that's a good that's a good year. That's a good crop. Yeah, huh? it is. Yeah. And you you all this interesting operation because many of your moms are first time moms. Aren't right. They? This right now it is. Uh huh. And we watch those ones a little bit closer. Mm-hmm. Well, b yeah, because they don't really know what they're doing yet. Right. Do right. First um, time moms. Oftentimes, I guess they don't produce quite as much milk as, as an older one. Correct. Too, huh? Well, did you ever think, uh, did you think that you would be in a cow calf operation when you were a kid? Did you uh, think no. that this is something Absolutely you were going to do? Absolutely not. No. <laughs> And, your, and, and with your but kids here, too. Huh? Exactly. So it's a lot of daughter. fun, though. You and Austin have two daughters. Yes, we do. Yeah. And our oldest one right now is really involved. She likes to come out here. She even has her own little scooper. She comes and cleans mm -hmm. pins out with us. Is and that right? She's in charge of dumping the feet and making sure the gates <laughs> stay closed. It looks like she's doing a yep. really good job right now. <laughs> well, thanks for talking to Thank us. Thank you. Austin, we were talking to your grandpa. He said he, as long as he can remember, He's been working. He's been working in this barn. That's pretty true for you, isn't it? That's too? the same. Yeah. <laughs> well, that feels pretty comforting, doesn't it, to know that uh, you know 
you and your dad and 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 your kids and you you all sort of have the same life experience that's kind of cool it is yeah it's very humbling i guess you could say yeah um we are in a specific place i think this is called the, is this sort of the calving calving pin is what calving i call pin. it okay now we're not calving and nobody's calving today but no during a couple of weeks ago when you were when you were bringing in calves this is this there's an op, there's a real specific way these these pens are set up so that you can make that happen right correct describe it to us okay so basically all this is is a uh, it's a revised working chute um, it's just made worker friendly so you can work them basically by yourself and be able to uh, uh, get a cow in and be able to keep her from get, being able to get to you and you can help her out um, now, now how do you know this might be a stupid question how do you know when she's ready to calf? Uh, I mean, is it pretty obvious? Yeah, usually there'll be a, usually whenever we find them and they think you might need help, there's usually some kind of water sack or something hanging out the back of them. Okay. That's the best. Or their feet sticking out. Um, oh, so she's already started. Right, yeah. usually, but usually, especially with a first calf heifer, she has that water sack out for a few hours. We're getting her in this pen just to kind of make sure everything's going right and would just it'd rather be safe than sorry yeah. I guess you could say now oftentimes they don't need your help i guess they'll just calve on their own that's the plan okay that's the plan and and so you would need this pen they just out there they lay down in the hay they have their calf and they're and they're licking it off and they're they're good with it huh i mean yeah just... i would much rather have calves outside in the sun than have them inside in a mm -hmm. barn there's so many more things that could potentially go wrong whenever mm -hmm. you have them in a small confined area but um whenever it's the best um, option for the cow and the calf coming it's just something that you have yeah. to do we're looking so. at a little calf right now that how old is this one we're looking at oh it's probably about three weeks old uh-huh and no problems with that that one's perfectly healthy i guess yep huh? up and going uh running around okay so. now we got mom this isn't mom but a potential mom here let's assume that she's getting ready to calf and she needs your help you've already got her pinned to where her head is already sort of locked out there right yep yep um so basically now um, there's a, you can pin that over and that'll keep that from coming out and that'll keep her from moving side to side. So whenever we're helping her out and feeling mm -hmm. inside of her, that way she can't lay over, break your arm, right. keeps her from moving around, smashing right. somebody Sa against Safer face. for you. Yep. Now, if you're really having a difficult time, you've got certain tools that you may need to use. What, yep. what, what are those? This here is what you call, are the pulling chains. Um, so here we'll just make it happen so basically if this calf was coming if it's coming right the front legs will be sticking straight back so it'll be coming out okay and its nose would be right there okay so usually the first thing you see is these feet mm -hmm. and so you can take these chains and you just make loops out of them like that, mm -hmm. and so whenever I go to put them on, whenever I'm reaching inside of her, I can put that over my wrist, and you can kind of reach, and it'll fall down over that ankle, and you can just pull it tight. Okay. And so you do that to each leg, mm -hmm. and you want to get it behind this, I guess you'd say their joint, because mm -hmm. it won't harm them as much. If you get it down here too low, you can okay. harm their hoof. Right. So you can do that. And if she's having trouble, that helps you pull, actually pull the calf exactly. out. Exactly, so then we can, I forgot to grab it, but there's another hook you can just hook onto here. Mm -hmm. And if it's not a hard pull, you just you can just pull it out by hand that mm -hmm. way. Um, we've had some, like me and my brother pulled one the other day. It was actually coming backwards. Uh-oh. And so that would be the back feet. And yeah. we could kind of see her out here. We, she was outside having the calf, and we could tell something was up because the back feet when they're hanging out look different than the front feet. Oh, man. Was she okay? Yeah. It ended up being fine, but... Um, it just pulls a lot different because the hips come out. The hips come out. Or they're a lot bigger right here. Yeah. So a cast made it kind of makes a V whenever it's supposed to come out head first. Yeah. So it's hard to get these hips out first. And that's why she was having a yeah. problem yeah. then. Yeah. yeah. So. And what about these? Are these are, are, are that's for need... more that's for more extreme situations. Oh, whenever man. you can't get it out by hand. Yeah. Um, oh man, that must be really hard to oh. that that fits back on the cow. Yeah. Um, it's just a lot safer though this way um, yeah. because how this fits up behind the cow it'll keep pressure against the cow then rather than just pulling everything so you're not yeah. pulling on necessarily her neck and everything now you're yeah. actually pulling 
against her body, so it kind of holds her. It's a lot safer and a lot. Do you more ever easy. do you ever lose a, a cow when uh, during during birthing? Well, the calf that we were looking at earlier, that's what happened. Um, we didn't even have to pull the cow, but the cow actually prolapsed. Oh. Um, wow. And it was just one of those things that you couldn't do anything about. We did everything we could. We had the vet here, and yeah, um, yeah. It just it, hap it just happens. Yeah. It just happens. So. Wow. Well, this is really hard work when you're calving, isn't it? I mean, sometimes you you never know how many you're, when you're going to be needed or how often you're going to be needed, right? That's that's right. And we keep everything here close. We can drive up and down the road, um, be able to look and uh, keep a closer eye on them. We can keep them inside here, especially at night. It's easier to keep an eye on them whenever um, uh, we can just light the whole place up. Mm -hmm. You can walk in here and go through them and see if yeah. anybody's having problems yeah. and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. So. Well, thanks. I guess you're not calving anymore for a while, huh? Oh, no. There's about 30 got, of them out here. Is that right? That are, that are pregnant? Any, they're just any day now. Uh, no so. kidding. Uh, wow. Okay. Well, maybe we'll get lucky. Maybe today. Uh, <laughs> it's usually in the middle of the night, so he might sure have to stay for a while. Sure it is. <laughs> well, Sherry, I guess you do this just about every day, don't you? Somebody has to do this almost every single day. <laughs> Nothing new for you. You were a farm girl. You grew up a farm girl, and then you met John in college at the U of I. You both got, got uh, degrees in animal science. Yes. And now here you are on the farm again. Here we are on the farm. This is where we love to be. We want to raise our family. There's no better place than to raise our children, our grandchildren. We've got, you've already met Wayne, and yeah. so the Wayne and Karen. So grandparents are all here. This is a family farm for sure. And, uh, we're all involved in agriculture. We have another son who's working up north on a, on a goat farm, and uh, he's there. And we have a daughter who's going to graduate from University of Illinois in May. No kidding. Yes. And, and is she, she animal sciences she too? She actually will have a minor in animal science, wow. and her degree will be in um, ag leadership education. So she's out there wanting to promote and uh, support, do marketing, yeah. and work in all kinds of, once again, promoting agriculture to, uh, so that uh, not just, you know, you just can't promote it to the farmers. You got to promote it to the general public. And Yeah. And you may not get her back on the farm though. It sounds like she wants well, to do something else. I don't know. She, well, the other thing we're always in, we're involved with around here, uh, we're all involved in crop insurance. I work for Farm Credit Illinois, mm -hmm. and I do crop insurance there. And Austin actually works for one of the crop insurance companies, and he's an adjuster. And actually, Abby has some interest in that too. So well, we, you got to uh, stay busy, right? We have gotta to stay, stay busy. busy, and and that's yeah. I think that's the uh, the the way of the yeah. farm. I yeah. think somebody is always. There's a lot of multitasking. Oh, there's always so many things to do. Yeah. Mm, these well, cows keep us busy yes, all I'm the sure time, year do. round. But Especially it's the best thing. Season. It, it is. is the best thing. The best thing is when the sun comes out. It's a little uh, get a little warmer out there, and those baby calves will run with those <laughs> tails in the air like you wouldn't believe, and it makes everything worth it. Everything worth it. Well, thank you. Thank you. Well, Wayne, this is a little different, a little more modern. Uh -huh. than the barn that we saw you in just a little bit earlier that you used to work with in your with your grandpa um, but you still like your old tractors and your old yeah. stuff even though it's a new building right right <laughs> you Dad were, had a tractor like that that like this farm all over uh -huh. here the yes. MTA well didn't he have one like like this too yeah yeah but these are these, these are restored these are tractors that you bought since then yes. right? yeah but you like them because they're like your dad's yes. tractors okay you were telling us about the old barn and how much some of it was taken out and these were the original dividers from yeah. from the barn when it was a horse this was the horse mm -hmm. barn part right? right and you got a lot of the old tools too didn't you? yeah look at all this stuff this all came out of the old barn uh -huh. i was hanging along that in the hall yeah you used a lot of these tools i bet grandpa was kind of a, a blacksmith too that's his blacksmith tools Oh, he used. Oh, I see. He used that in, in smithing. Okay, uh -huh. he probably made some tools too, didn't he? But he made some of yeah, those tools. Yeah, that thing there. And these are more pictures of you. I love that one with you and the horses up there on the right. Uh huh. You're just a little, just a little kid there. Yeah. Okay, that was with Grandpa, right? Uh huh. <laughs> ah. Well, this is kind of neat because you've got your own little museum here. Yeah. 
got the yoke from the old horses and mm -hmm. everything that you need to, to keep. Uh, this was the way a horse was harnessed. That was a single tree. And this went across his back. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you were were you you were too little, weren't you then, to 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 do any harnessing, or did you actually? No, the, I didn't do any harnessing. You were too little. Yeah. Yeah. By the time you could, by the time you were big enough, there were tractors. We got a picture of three tractors parked in front of that barn down yeah. there. Yeah. That he had a forty-eight WD. Yeah. And a. 35 F20, which was an international, and a C. Yeah. And they were all in the early tractors. Yeah. And like like this one over here. Mm -hmm. Wasn't this one? This this was your tractor, wasn't it? Yes. And <laughs> look at those kids. <laughs> well, they, Wayne, I think they I think they would enjoy your tractor as well. Yeah. Just like you did, huh? <laughs> I got a buddy seat on that. Karen said I had to haul grandkids in the buddy seat. <laughs> That's the buddy seat. You do take these in parades, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I had this one at Prairie Land at the steam show. Oh, I love that show. Yeah. 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 I remember. Are you gonna Are you gonna go again this year? I plan to, and I give tractor rides to that yeah. Friday. We're We're thinking about doing another program because I think it's the 50th anniversary this year. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the uh, that's the steam the, the uh, what do they call it the heritage steam show, Prairie Land. Prairie Land heritage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Look at those kids, aren't they having a time? Well, this is of course as you can see, it's a generational concept here. Four generations are in this barn right now, and they're not going to stay here long though because they have 30 pregnant cows right up the road, and calving season is underway. With another Illinois story in Jacksonville, I'm Mark McDonald. Thanks for watching. Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, Illinois Arts Council Agency, and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. For a DVD copy of the program you've just seen, send 1995 to P.O. Box 6248, Springfield, Illinois 62708. Be sure to include the program name, subject, and when the program aired. You can also order with your credit card by calling 800-232-3605.